I'm here in Washington in the city of Puyallup for the event called Thrift of Palooza. This is my first time coming and my friend Abby invited me and we're gonna head inside and see what kind of treasures we can find. As you can see behind me, things went good today picking, but before we hit the road and we start our thrifting, I've got a few really exciting announcements that I wanna share with you. I'm gonna be hosting three different meetups this spring and summer. The first one is gonna be in Pasadena, California. This is gonna be April 27th and it's gonna be a happy hour event at Sunbeam Vintage. So if you live in Southern California and you are free on April 27th, I would love to meet you and we can go shop some amazing mid-century vintage together and have a fun evening happy hour at Sunbeam Vintage. And then on April 29th, I'm going to be in Las Vegas for the Charleston Antiques Bazaar. If you've seen the Las Vegas episode, you already know that I found so much stuff inside their massive antique mall. And this is going to be even better because the vintage is going to be overflowing in the entire parking lot. And then the third meetup is actually going to be a full shop with me day that I'm going to be hosting here in Oregon. I'm hosting my very first ever vintage flea market July 15th and 16th at the Portland Expo Center. And I'm going to be hosting a fun shop with me day that will include lunch on July 19th. So if you would like to find out more about any of these three fun meetups and join in the fun, please check out my website, leftcoastrevivals.com. I will be sending out all the details in an upcoming newsletter very soon. So make sure you subscribe on my website and you can also click on the events tab and you will see all of the upcoming events I've got going on so far this year. Now let's hit the road and head to Thriftapalooza. Abby, you're in the first 50. Go, girl. <laughs> My friend Abigail with Abigail's Artful Abode invited me to come up and join her for Thrift of Palooza in Puyallup, Washington. She had me the second she said the words Thrift of Palooza. This little girl's got the right idea. Get it. Go get the junk. <laughs> this event is all about buying secondhand. I love supporting their mission, and I'm excited to see what treasures we find here. I haven't found any treasures yet, but so far the pricing is looking really promising. I'm seeing things listed from anywhere from a dollar to five dollars, so this is more like garage sale pricing, which is super exciting when you go to a market because it means you might find a good deal. St. Vinny's has a booth. Look at this. This is amazing. And it's like the best booth here. As I was doing a panning shot of this table, I spotted these two beautiful tiny little woven baskets. These are native Alaskan, and I've seen even these miniature ones sell for hundreds of dollars. They do not have a price on them, so we are going to go ask the lady and see how much they want for them. I'm trying to hold in my excitement. She just said $10 for the pair. This is a good start to the morning for my first find. Find any good stuff? <laughs> oh, a few. Not as much as um, last year, though. Yeah. This is cute little art. $10. Here's some little owl bookends. Let's see how much those are. $20 for the set. It's not bad, but it's not great. 
They are cute. I'm gonna put them out front and center. Someone's gonna get those. Those are cute. Oh my gosh, those are adorable. I'm always thinking about gifts for family and friends when I'm out treasure hunting, and my niece has been really into doll houses lately. This would be the perfect birthday gift to give her. I'm gonna go through here and pick out my favorites. I'm looking more for the older pieces and things that are made out of solid wood. This vendor was so lovely, and she even did a bundle price for me since I got multiple items. I had to get the little hand-painted table and the beautiful rug, and her and her dad play the piano all the time, so I thought it'd be neat if I got the piano and a cute little stool to put a plant on. Now I'm going to have to go play dollhouse with her. I found a vendor with a whole stash of sterling silver jewelry. A lot of the earrings were single earrings, but I was able to find quite a few pairs and the pricing is between $6 and $10 for each pair. This is a Danish Teak ice bucket and it's only $26 and these sell for around $75 to $125. We are getting this one for sure. I'm kind of into this for some weird reason. It looks like a bottle but it is a puzzle and she's only asking a dollar for it. Let's get that little cutie, $12.50. Now let's go check out this other building in here. I've heard it's mostly closed, but I know there are several good vintage dealers. More probably made in the 70s. I think he's fantastic. Look at the dog. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love him. What do we think? What do we think? Do we love or do we hate? I love it. I love too. We're on the love side. We're on the love side. All and love. it says Leo 1815. Oh my gosh, how funny. Isn't that funny? And I love seeing like the stuff that, you know, the basket and then the beautiful tiles yeah. and the his little outfit. The Look curtains. at his little bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> this wood carved sculpture doesn't have a price on it. Well, actually it says $90 in a Sharpie written on the bottom, but I don't think that that is the actual pricing. We are going to ask them how much it actually is priced at, and if it's under $20, we're going to get her. Markets like this are always really good for finding vintage jewelry, not just sterling silver, but keep in mind that a lot of high-end costume jewelry is overlooked. I have found high-end costume jewelry pieces at markets like this before that were only a dollar and they were worth over $200. So many jewelry resellers are only looking for sterling and gold. So don't forget to look for high-end costume jewelry. that my friends was thrift of palooza so there wasn't quite as much vintage as i was hoping and after doing my first lap i started getting a little bit nervous i was like oh no i'm not finding much of anything i had a really good time chatting with some of the vendors especially the saint vincent's de paul that was really neat getting to talk with her and learn a little bit about why they are starting to do vintage markets and how they are pivoting with the ever-changing world of second hand i love when people are are kind of at the forefront and they're willing to try new things in an industry and they're just willing to see what works and I think that it's going to be a really good brand exposure for them and the money that they earn here at the market and at their store can go to great causes. It took me a couple laps but then I started to really find some stuff. I got excited after I found the vendor with jewelry because I was able to find about six different sets of earrings and they were all under ten dollars. I ended up paying around six for most of the pairs because she gave me a good deal. And there was a couple single earrings that I'm gonna rework into either new earrings or a pendant necklace. So that will be fun. She's right here, hold on. 
I love her. She's such a beautiful religious carved wood figurine and I know that she's going to end up going in the perfect place for the perfect person who's going to really love her. But I thought that she was just beautiful and she's all hand carved. And I got a really gorgeous teak ice bucket. I got the cute little horse and a few other things. So I will pull all of these items out when we get back home. Right now we're headed to brunch with Abby and I'm excited to hear about the things that she found. When Abby and I were driving from Thriftapalooza to brunch, we drove by Third Street Antiques. We saw the windows filled with treasures and we knew we had to keep shopping. You can can I take a look at this, the candle holder? Yeah, I love that. I have sold this exact candle holder actually in a set of two in the past for around $300. I actually got those at Goodwill for only a few dollars each. And this vendor has everything in this case 50% off. They've got $80, but at 50% off, that makes it $40. I think this is something that I could expect to get $150 for. I just found this aggregate planter and it's only $45. I think that's gonna be awesome to add to the collection we have. We have about four of them outside right now, but this one's kind of a size that could actually go indoors. I love the color on this soapstone sculpture. Most often when I come across these, they're in a gray, kind of a cream color or a peachy pink. So the beautiful bright color on this is kind of fun and it's only $8, which is a really great price for being at an antique store. Something inside of me is calling me to salvage this mirror. Now I know white is beautiful, classic, and timeless, but I know that this has been painted over the original wood color. And mirrors like this are so good for selling at vintage flea markets, especially if you sell jewelry. This summer I am hosting a flea market here in Portland. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sell at it, but just in case I can find a way to make that work, I'm thinking that this could be perfect for having next to my jewelry display. I have gotten really picky over my fiber art the last few years, especially as I'm seeing the trend go down with boho, but this beauty is not going to be for resale. This is going to make a great addition to our Don Friedman collection we have, and I don't know what wall or where it's going to go, but this is coming home with me. So this is a piece of pottery by a Danish designer that I've always dreamed about finding. I've never actually seen one of her pieces in person, but... They know what it is, so the pricing's probably gonna be pretty high. But isn't that incredible? I've sold one of these turtle graders before. I think mine ended up selling for just over $100. They've only got $30 on this one, so I feel like that's a really solid investment. Since I've sold one before, and it also has the cool factor, I always am trying to find unique and cool things to have in my online vintage store. This is kind of funny. It's a spoon and fork easel and they actually welded on the spoon and fork to hold the plate. Kind of clever. Talk about an entrance to the upstairs. I mean, I feel like I'm about to walk into a time portal and go to another realm right now. A realm packed with vintage. This store is quickly becoming one of my favorite vintage malls to shop in Washington. 
The teapots and this brass Chinese zodiac ashtray are both 50% off. We are headed back downstairs to go add them to our pile. This is such a beautiful tooled leather purse. Sadly, the zipper doesn't close very easily. Otherwise, I would be getting it. It is only $16.50. This little wicker chair is so cute. It's actually a child size. I love kids furniture that looks like adult furniture. I think it's the cutest thing on earth. I am still on the hunt for the perfect knife wood block for my kitchen, and this one is only $4.95. I don't know if my knives are going to fit in it, but for that price, we're getting it for sure. I'm kind of blown away by some of the pricing in this antique mall. This would literally be $6.99 at a Goodwill back home. And this is part of why I never ever count out thrifting at antique stores and vintage malls. You never know what you're going to find, and you just got to take your time and look. This set of coasters is on sale and it's only $7 for the whole set. They look a little bit thirsty, but we're going to go ahead and get them and wood oil them when we get back to the shop. And in case you were interested in finding out what kind of wood oil I use, I will put that in the link in the description below. I also love this vintage brass bird bowl. It's only $10. This vendor here is also having a sale and I'm loving these little mirrors. There are two of them and they will be perfect for adding into a gallery wall. This time we've not only got the penguin ice bucket stocking me, but now we've got the cocktail shaker too. Bernard Buffett is one of my favorite mid-century artists, and I have found a lot of his prints throughout the years. Typically, I don't come across them this large. This one is from 1965, and they're asking $95. My favorite thing about his art is that it always has this moody undertone. Here's my birds in flight for $1,400 in the matte black. Remember when I found mine for only $325, I think? Maybe $350. Still got an amazing deal. And this, my friends, is a Batosi. It is gorgeous. They know that it was imported by Raymore, but they don't have it listed as a Batosi on the tag. They've got $95 on it, and I'm going to take it to the front counter and see if they can do a little bit better on the pricing. Because look at how big this vase is. Obviously, today's haul was awesome. Not only did I find some really cool things at Thriftapalooza, but I scored at the Third Street Antique Mall. Before we jump into today's haul, I've got to thank today's sponsor for this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. And you can easily make your website stand out and be beautiful by using one of their many, many customizable templates. I have been selling my vintage finds on my Squarespace website for over nine years now. Not only will your website be beautiful and easy to build out the way you want it, it will help you engage with your audience, sell anything you want, your products, your content, what you create, and even your time. Squarespace makes it easy to connect to your other social media accounts. You can set it up so that you automatically display posts from your other social media profiles, and you can automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. Head to squarespace.com to start your free trial today, and when you are ready to launch your own website, head to squarespace.com slash left coast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Thank you. 
Bertha Palooza was in two separate buildings and because I was a little further back in line, I ended up going directly into the second building. My strategy was that most of the pickers that were in front of me probably went into the first building. So I was gonna try to at least be the first one into the second building. Obviously I wasn't the first in any building. I should have got up a little bit earlier. By the time I ran into Abby in the second building, she already had a cart full. I was like, oh my gosh, where'd you get all this stuff? I was not on my picking A game this morning, but I had a great time and it was really fun to get to spend time with Abby and to see what she picks up because we have very similar styles. So we were both peeking in each other's bags, seeing what the other person got. By far my best find at Thriftapalooza was probably these beautiful native Alaskan hand woven baskets. They might look very tiny, but they have a lot of history and a lot of value. And it would be impossible for me to pick a favorite from Third Street Antiques. I've narrowed it down to three top finds. The Aggregate Planter, which many people might think is extremely boring, but these are pretty hard to come across and I absolutely love them. This guy is gonna go into our outdoor breezeway, which we completely remodeled and decorated last year. And I say remodeled because we had to actually redo a lot of the structure and tear down a whole corner of our garage. It was a huge project and we were so happy with the results and how it turned out after we put all of that time and effort and money into it. But the thing that really brings a space like that to life is putting your personal touches with vintage finds. And then this mirror, it's incredible. I am so dang excited about this. So I know that a lot of 1970s items, the boho look is somewhat out of style, but I don't really worry too much about trends. I try to pay enough attention to trends so I know what's gonna sell, so I don't end up buying things and investing in inventory that's just gonna sit there, because that's not good for business. But when it comes to things that I wanna decorate with and things that I want in my own home, I truly do not worry about what the trends are, and I try to stick with what I'm being drawn to. So where I'm going with all of that is that I am always gonna have a little bit of boho in my house forever. I love my Don Friedman fiber art wall hangings. I have a couple of them. I have the amazing lion one that I technically keep here in my studio. I have a massive Don Friedman that I have in my bedroom. And then I also have the one that has the cool face on it that we have in our basement. I don't know where I'm gonna put this one. It's so amazing. I might keep it here in the studio just to stage with for a while, especially now that I have my wall done behind me so I can actually do full vignettes. But eventually I'm hoping I find the right place for it in our home. I especially love this one because it looks like an eye and it actually makes me think of the eye of Sauron in Lord of the Rings. It's kind of dark, but I like it. And of course I can't forget about the beautiful Batosi vase. I have actually sold a pair of those in the past and I'm kind of bummed because it would have been nice to have all three sizes. However, I am actually gonna be letting this amazing vase go. One tip that I have when you are in an antique store and you find an item that's very valuable. A lot of times the antique stores will only do a discount if it's over a certain amount. And my tip is to make a reasonable offer. If I would have come in with an offer of $50, they probably just would have said no outright. They might have countered. I typically come in with a strong offer that I feel like they're gonna accept. In this case, I knew the vase was worth at least $150 on the resale market. They had $95 on it, so I came in with a solid offer of 80 and they accepted immediately. There are a lot of different ways that you can go about getting a lower price at an antique store. This is personally just the way that I do it. I like to support the small businesses in the antique stores and also get a good deal. Let's start decorating with some of the items that I have behind me. We're just gonna start over here. So I wanna talk about the wooden knife block holder because the pattern on it actually matches this beautiful cutting board that my mom gave me and it's been in our family for quite a long time. I put a little bit of wood oil on this to see if I could get it to kind of match a little better and it does. So now I'm wondering if I want to keep this 
because I could have that on one side of the kitchen and this on the other to kind of tie in this design and pattern. I still need to check and see if my knives at home will fit in here. The last time I bought a knife block, it was a little bit too narrow for my knives. So if my knives do not fit in this, you will see it coming for sale in my next First Friday shop sale. This little guy is so cute. He's signed on the bottom, CW. He's just so fun. I think he'd look great just sitting on top of a pile of books on a bookshelf. And then this beauty I got for 50% off. I've actually sold one of these before, so I already knew how valuable it was. These are super heavy duty. They're very high quality brass candle holders. And I think they're just so cool. They look like the top of a castle. This etched brass duck bowl is actually an ashtray, I believe. That is why you've got that little slit there in his tail. That is to hold the cigarette. But I think it would be beautiful to use as a little soap dish, or you could even use it to burn sage or Palo Santo sticks in. And these little baskets are so special. Look how beautifully fine woven this is. It's very tight woven, and I really hope that I can do a little more research and find out who the actual artist is. Do those look like butterflies or flowers? Yeah, I think they're flowers. What do you think? Do you think those are butterflies or flowers? These are gonna be really hard to let go of. I love them so much. Such a good find. I got the pair for only $10. I'm pretty sure that this teak ice bucket is a Danish piece that is by the same designer that did my spice wheel that I have at home that is not hung yet. I'm gonna show you a clip of what that looks like spinning on a table so you can see what I'm talking about. These Danish designer pieces go for quite a hefty price online. These beautiful hand painted folk art carved mirrors are going to go into a gallery wall that I'm working on right now. So you'll get to see these displayed soon in an upcoming episode. This is kind of a fun one. So I thought originally that this turtle was a cheese grater but I found out that it might actually be a coconut grater, which would maybe make sense why it has this sharp area on the tail. Maybe you use that to crack open the coconut. I don't know. Either way, I think it could be used as a cheese grater. I've actually sold one of these before in the past, and when I saw this, I just had to get it because I think they're so fun. And what's cool about them too is that they actually can hang on the wall from the little hook, so you can use it kind of as a piece of kitchen art too. What do you think? It's a cheese grater, coconut grater. Anybody have any other ideas? I found this beauty even after being there for over an hour. She was actually in the very first building. I don't know how old this wood carving is. Is, but there's a lot of symbolism here and she's just so beautiful. I thought this was fun. It's a Chinese zodiac brass ashtray, but I think it would work perfect to put a candle in there. These sure oiled up nice. They were looking really thirsty there at the antique store, but I knew that a little bit of natural wood oil and they would come back to life. I was about to check out with the ice bucket and the gentleman said, are you sure there's nothing else? We took another look around his space and I ended up finding this beautiful horse. It's all hand painted. These horses are very Bitosi like in style, but I believe they were sold in the solid white and then people could hand paint them to make them their own style. They're not incredibly valuable, but it's really cute and I got it for a good price. I 
I've seen these 1980s soapstone sculptures a lot, but I've never seen one in this beautiful blue color. This was a fun Thriftapalooza find. So the vendor that had this actually was late to the market. They were in the very first building and they were setting up about an hour into the market and they were just kind of pulling stuff out of boxes and I spotted this. I don't know why I love it. It's completely not functional. It's actually just a puzzle. It doesn't open. There's nothing you can put inside it, but I think it's really fun and it would look cool just on a bookshelf. And the best part is it was only a dollar. I got this three piece silver plated tea set because it was 50% off. This vendor had so many good things that were half off. I've seen similar ones listed online saying they were French. I'm not quite positive. Surprisingly, there's actually no stamps on this. And I'm pretty sure that the center of this would typically have been left blank so that you could put your own monogram on it. They're really beautiful. Sadly, I think this probably would have come with a lid and it didn't have one. Oh well, they are absolutely gorgeous and they were 50% off. I am going to attempt to strip this back to its original wood, which probably would have been a nice dark wood color. In fact, I bet woo, we can lift this and see on the bottom. Yes, so it's a pretty dark wood color and you can kind of even see it there just a little bit on that edge. I'm hoping that this is chalk paint and that it will come off very easily. If you have any suggestions on the best products to use for stripping it and keeping the wood in the best condition as possible, I would appreciate any suggestions. I've done a lot of wood stripping before, but I've just used kind of like the name brand chemicals, and I just wanna make sure that I do this the best way possible so that I can restore it back to its original condition. Thank you so much for joining me today on this adventure in Puyallup, Washington. I wish that I would have had more time to hit the other antique stores there in town. So I guess that that means I need to plan a trip back to Washington very soon. I had such a great time on this three day adventure. So I wanna say a huge thank you for tagging along with me and joining me on this trip. I have some really fun sourcing road trips planned for this spring and summer. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss when those episodes come out. I will see all of you in the next adventure.